All right, hello everyone, and <clears throat> peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today, our topic is about hell, fire, and heaven. Uh, you know, uh, as all of you, you know that Islam have uh, always different understanding of everything. And uh, it doesn't matter really if we share the same uh, words like uh, heaven or hell. Heaven in Islam is not the same as our heaven, and hell in Islam is not the same as our hell. But today we are going to discuss what is the reason to go to heaven or to hell. Uh, Always, you know, uh, people, they take Islam wrongly and they think Islam is the same as any other religion. And they believe that if you are a bad person, you go to hell, which is the most common uh, understanding for the reason to go to hell. And if you are a good person, you go to heaven. Now, this is not really the scenario for Islam. And today we are going to discuss this together. Please invite your friends and tell your friends that we are live on air. And uh, let us see today if we are going to get some Abdul here uh, to explain to us what's wrong with the heaven and hell of Islam as reasoning, which means why, why somebody will go to hell and somebody will go to heaven in Islam. What is the understanding of this? cult uh, what we will show together you know uh, together today uh, that's all the understanding of reasoning for you which you know about heaven and hell is not what it is in Islam and number one understanding we, we must uh, uh, reach to that it doesn't matter really if you are a bad person or a good person it doesn't matter really who you are Going to heaven or to hell in Islam has nothing to do with you being bad or good. Which might sound weird for many of you, and actually it's weird for everybody. Especially the Quran speak in many verses that the bad ones, they will go to hell. The bad ones will be punished and sent to hell. The, the good ones, they will go and have a good deeds. But that is a nothing but a contradiction for many statements coming from the mouth of Muhammad himself explaining what is the reason really or what is the real reason for people to go to heaven and to go to hell and after we see together the evidence we will speak of uh, i'm sure most of you will change uh, totally his understanding uh, about islam so what is heaven and what is hell the normal understanding we know that if you go to heaven in Islam you will get a long penis and you will have sex with a lot of women which is very nice you know I mean I don't think there's any man he hate that uh, but obviously there's no love in this uh, sexual uh, you know heaven it's just a sexual heaven uh, because you know when you provide me with um, let us say 80,000 women and I don't know even who they are. I'm just going to have sex with them. So obviously the reward is all about sex. And love is not involved. You know, you are not having sex with women you love. You are having sex with women you do not know. A woman, she is pre-made for you to be uh, your sexual, uh, you know, appetite or, you know, uh, a gift. It's a sexual gift is going to be provided to you by uh, the one the Muslims consider him God uh, and I find it kind of uh, you know uh, a satanic a promise because you know in relationship between a man and a woman uh, if we take off the, uh, the emotion and we make it just sexual then that is just sexual. I mean, the women is not there and the man is not there. It's all what is exists is the vagina and the penis. So it's a it's a kind of time where you make the penis happy and the vagina happy, but you and her are not exist in that relationship because the purpose is not even to know her name. The purpose is to satisfy your needs and her needs. So uh, sexuality in Islam is about needs not about uh, 
you know, um, reaching out to to complete your life with someone you love and you'll be happy with the same as the story of Adam and Eve. Adam was created and Eve was created so they can complete each other to be the couple who can enjoy their life. But God did not create Eve's for Adam. He created one woman. And I think God, he knows very well that one woman is more than enough to destroy a man. So imagine, I mean, to give to give him a hell of a life. So imagine having 80 or 70 or 80,000 as Muhammad, he promised in his Quran. Uh, I'm going to turn my Skype on. So if there is any Muslim would like to call us, he can give us a call. And don't worry, Muslims. I mean, you 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 will uh, you will do your best, and people will listen to you, and let everybody be the judge for what you say and what Islam is teaching you or Islam taught you. But based on my experience, I could not really find anyone he can give us any kind of answer about anything. Uh, uh, our Skype right now is on. If you are a Muslim, please feel free and give me a call. Uh, if we go and check out the teaching of Islam about why we go to hell Why why somebody go to hell? Let us go first to the Quran <clears throat> If we try to find it from the Quran Six grooming gangs in Turf Road, Britain, and what does have to do with my topic? There's a huge difference between people do stuff and someone claim that this is God, godly stuff. You know, you can be a gang and you can be a criminal and you can be a rapist. That's not my business. Speak smart. Uh, who is going to go to heaven? According to the Quran, as I said, in many places the Quran speak of reasons to go to heaven. It says here as an example, "Wa bashir aladina aman wa amilu salihat anna lahum jannatun tajri min tahtha al-anhar." So give the glad tidings news for those who did good deeds, for they are going to have uh, heavens and rivers go underneath of it, as you see. So what you understand from this verse? That if you do righteousness, then you will go to heaven. But that's not really true. And we will show you later that this is absolutely false. And the same example can be found in many verses in the Quran. All those who obey Allah and etc., etc., they will have heaven and they will have women there and they will have sex with them, blah, 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 blah. So the, the, the Quran repeat the same condition that those who do good deeds or those who do righteousness or those who obey Allah, you know, as you see here. So this is supposedly what anyone, regardless of what his religion, uh, he will come to a conclusion of that's if you obey God, you go to heaven. If you do righteousness, you go to heaven. If you do bad things, you go to hell. However, this is not the case. And that is really the surprise about Muhammad, uh, the one who claimed to be a prophet, because always he contradict what he say in the Quran by what he teach by his own mouth. Uh, if we go in the Hadith, And today I will try not to stay long uh, in our broadcast. We will find this. This is a story about a child who is a Muslim uh, child by birth, which means he is born from a Muslim family. I remember Muhammad, he believed that everyone is born as a Muslim anyway. So this is a hadith. 
and this is a Sahih Hadith. As you see here in the front of me, it says that Aisha, the mother of the believers, repeated that a child died, and I said, a child, he died. There is happiness for this child who is a bird from the amongst the birds of paradise. Thereupon Allah Messenger said, Don't you know that Allah created paradise and he created hell and he created the dwellers of the of paradise and the uh, uh, you know like, like the ones who live in hell before he created them? And the same story reported in many places. Here it's actually even even more clear. Uh, but let us read this one, it gives us more details. This one is better because it's more clear. And as you see, this is a Sahih Hadith, so the Muslims cannot say it's weak or they can reject it as usual. Because even weak, by the way, is accepted, but this is the game they play. The mother of the believers, Aisha said, one of the children of Al-Ansar, Ansar is a group of Muslims who joined Islam, uh, who had died, was brought to the Messenger of Allah, so he prayed for him. Aisha said, how fortunate, fortunate he is, one of the little birds of paradise. He never did any evil or reached the age of puberty. Actually, it doesn't say that in Arabic. Uh, it doesn't say that at all. It says he did not do any sin or evil or bad, and he did not reach the age where someone can do bad which means he's a very young uh, boy maybe he is a uh, uh, eight month old you know uh, year one year old something like that so I actually think that this boy he is going to go to heaven for he did not reach any age of sin in other way he is a pure child he never commit any sin but this is the understanding of Aisha oh there is no screen uh, sorry for that. Uh, good, you. I just saw it. Okay, I hope you see it right now. I apologize. I thought you guys you see the screen with me. It's my fault. All right. Now you can see it. So as you see here, let us read again from the beginning. Then the mother of the believers, Aisha, said, one of the children of Ansar who was, who had died was brought to the messenger of Allah. So he prayed for him. Aisha said. How fortunate he is, one of the little birds of paradise. He never did any evil or reached the age of uh, puberty. But as I said, this is not accurate translation. It said he did not do any wrong, which means any sin, and did not uh, uh, reach to the time where he can do sin, which means he is a pure child. He said, this is Muhammad talking now, it is but it's better not to say anything or Aisha so don't make judgment that he will go to heaven how you know the mighty and the supreme created paradise and created people for it what and he created in the lions of their father and he created hell and he created people for it and he created them in the lions of their of their fathers all right So you assuming that you go to heaven because you are a child or someone will go to heaven because he never commits sin, that is a very wrong understanding. In Islam, it doesn't matter if you commit sin or not. It doesn't matter if you are adult or a little boy. He is one year or one day old still you might go to hell here we will find the contradiction the huge contradiction of the teaching of muhammad and a very clear proof that muhammad is a madman because how you say in the quran in many verses that those who do righteousness they will go to heaven and how you say here that allah he decide who will go to heaven who will go to hell when they are even not created yet Allah created people for heaven and created people for hell. It's not your decision. It's not what you do.
and here you notice right away that the understanding of the reasoning to go to heaven and hell in Islam have nothing to do with your understanding because this is always what Christians and others groups they think that Muslims believe in the same thing that if you do righteousness you go to heaven if you do sin you go to hell that's not true are you messenger for me you are messenger for me I'm not doing I'm not sure what you mean Nareen um, so all of this all of this will lead us to one conclusion that when the Muslims believe that one of the pillars of Islam or the pillars of uh, of the faith of Islam uh, that you have to believe in the destiny of Allah and this is the destiny of Allah so you go to heaven you go to hell have nothing to do with you being bad or good it was a pre-made destiny look notice with me here you are not created yet you are just in the back bones of your father because Islam teach that a person he is a created in the backbone of the man this is where the sperm of the man coming from which is a very funny stupid understanding of Muhammad so while you are in the backbone of your father Allah created you for hell this is where where the message and the decision is made it's not later when you are born you are not even exist yet he created them he created people for hell and he created paradise for people of paradise while they are in the lions of their father so you do bad you do good doesn't matter this is why this baby child he might not go to heaven as Aisha assuming she think that he is fortunate he's lucky he will go to, he's a bird of heaven he's a little child he did no sin Muhammad he did not agree he said this is not true who told you he will go to heaven he might go to hell and here we need to ask ourselves a very simple question where is justice why this child he will go to hellfire you see the Muslims they keep saying to us that Islam is religion of justice which is absolutely false because there is no justice in Islam in everything. Where is justice for this child? Why he should go to hell, not to heaven? Or why he might go to hell? What he did? So when the Muslim try to say to you, if you convert to Islam, you go to heaven, this is a lie. Because as you see here, it doesn't matter what you do. This child is already born in a Muslim family. And Muhammad, he himself, he said in different hadith that every child is born as a Muslim, even the child from a Christian family. So how a Muslim child, he is just a little baby, he might go to hellfire. Where is the logic of this God? It sounds like the God of Islam, he is just playing games. I mean, he decided to go to hell, who go to heaven. It's just by, by the mood. It's a base in your luck. If you are lucky, Allah will put you between those who will go to heaven. All right? Yeah, the Bible speak about, uh, uh, because Bible speak of, of, of justice. Uh, even those who did not know Jesus never learn about Jesus God will judge them based on what they do and what they know not based on you know uh, just because you don't recognize Jesus well, this guy he never heard of Jesus let us say now in the year 2018 there's somebody living in the jungle in the middle of uh, the Amazon he never heard of the Bible he never heard of Jesus and judgment day come God will not judge him for not accepting Jesus for a very simple reason he never heard of him that is justice and the Messiah he said if you don't become the same as those little ones you will not be saved which mean in Christianity even for adult 
You want to go to heaven, you better be like them, those innocent children. In Islam, is the opposite. You being a child and commit no sin have nothing to do with this. Uh, no, actually, I think I was born as a Muslim because my mom, she told me when I was a kid, I used to do like, you know, poo, -poo in the diaper, you know. So I think this is a very clear sign and proof that I was a Muslim at that time. To the point you do not know how to do it in the right place in the right time. So that is a Muslim behavior, obviously. I have to agree with Muhammad here. And we can show you tons of reference showing how stupid this is and the logic of this religion is. As an example, let us see the front hadith. If we go to a different story, If you if you look in the YouTube, there is a guy. He was calling me names. You see, the Muslims when they speak in Arabic, they call me names. They say the bad words, etc. But when they speak in English, they they try like shame on you, speak to me in this way. This guy, and this is actually why today I'm making this uh, uh, this uh, topic, or or cho I chosen this topic. This guy in his post in YouTube. Let me see if I can if I can get the post. Hold on, uh, just to give you an idea how naive and stupid the Muslims. Uh, by the way, many people they say to me, you, you use the word stupid a lot. I mean, do you want me to replace it with something else? Whatever. Or, I mean, I have no choice. I have to use it. No, I have no choice, and I will show you why. Let us see where is this guy. Mm. You know, we have a lot of uh, comments in our videos, so it's hard to find. All right, read with me, please. This is the Muslim Abdul trying to convince us that you Muslim, you Christians, you have a wrong belief. You know, you and even even your Bible is against you. Read carefully. And we, uh, why do we need an innocent man blood when you can repent to God, the All Merciful? You see, this is the Muslim comment. This is not my comment. And then he is posting for you from Ezekiel. And always don't 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 take what the Muslim they say in their post. Check it out in the Bible to be accurate translation. However, we agree that a child, he is not going to be punished for the sin of his parents. And who is the stupid told you that a child, innocent child, will be punished for the sin of his parents? Who told you that? We Christian, we don't believe in that. We don't believe a child, he will be punished for any reason. Because you just said yourself, you admitted that he in here, he should not be punished for the sin of the parents, which means he should be punished for a sin. But as you see with me, my friends, Muhammad here, he says that this child, he will be punished by hellfire, but yet he commit no sin. So who is the stupid here? Are you getting my point? I'm showing you the Muslim post. Who is quoting for us from the Bible where it says that a child should not pay for the sin of his parents? We Christian, we believe in that. It is you Muslims who don't believe in that. And here we go: a child who commit no sin, he is going to go to hell. So, what is the reason for him to go to hell? That is the injustice of the stupid fiction created false cult. It's called Islam. Number two. If this person is trying to say to us that the reason or the, the reason for him to post this post, that why you believe that Jesus is going to, uh, you know, uh, is going to give you forgiveness. 
And the funny he is saying that the Quran confirm what is in the Bible. Read with me carefully. Say it is other than Allah. I should desire as Lord while He is the Lord of all things. And every soul or every soul earn not blame except against itself. Okay. So what is against the child who die as a Muslim and he is an infant boy? Any Muslim can tell me? How Muhammad he just said to Aisha, shut up Aisha, don't be stupid, this boy he might go to hell. Not only that. Not only that. If we go in the Quran, just to refresh your memory, in case you are not following my videos always, don't forget to subscribe if you are new, so you can be always with us. Do you remember the story of the Quran about a child who was killed by a prophet? His name is Al Khadr. Let us go to Al Khadr. The story of Al Khadr. Hmm. All right. For those who do not know what Al-Khadr is, Al-Khadr is a prophet. His name is Al-Khadr, which means the green. The reason he was called the green, it's coming from a fiction, legion stories, fairy tale stories, that there is a guy, he went all the way looking for the fountain of life, and he drank from that fountain of life, or he got some water from it, and then since then, he is youth and he never die. And anything he sit in, even if it's a dry grass, it turned green. This is why he was called Al-Khadr. This is a fiction story. Muhammad, he copied and he put it in his Quran, another proof that he is a false prophet. However, in chapter 18, verse number 74, remember, this is Quran. And remember, the Abdul, he was quoting for us Quran too, that a child should not pay for the sin. Every, every, every human being, every soul should pay for its sin. All right, what is the sin of this child? Chapter 18, verse number 74. We will read it from the Muslim translation. We proceed, then they proceed until they met a young man. Actually, it does not say a young man. It says a young boy. And I will prove it to you. He slew him. Who is the one who slew him? Prophet Al-Khadr, which Allah, he sent Moses. Prophet Moses, he sent him to take course from him. Which means, in this scenario now, Al-Khadr is the master of Moses, and Moses is there to learn from Al-Khadr. Moses said to him, you have slain an innocent person who had slain no one. So Moses, he could not understand why he killed this boy. Then a few verses after this guy, he explained to him why he slew this little boy. He said, as for the youth, his parents were people of faith. And we feared that he will grieve them by abstain, 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 sorry, and rebellion. Uh, so this child, he is going to, maybe, we fear, we guess maybe, it might be, that when he grow up, he will do something bad to his parents. Where is the sin? You are punishing the child before he commits sin. Remember, the Abdul here in this page, he said to us that the Quran says, uh, his book, and every soul earns not blame except against itself. This soul commit no sin yet. So why you are punishing this soul? It is the wisdom of Allah to punish a child for a sin he did not commit yet. We feared. Guys, did you see what the verse in the Quran is saying? We feared. What do you mean we feared? You killed the guy because you feared and he's a little boy? He did not commit sin. He did not kill anyone. He did not do anything. He's just a child playing with his friends. 
Where is justice? So you you know the Muslim they say to you, why Jesus should die for your sin? Why this child is dying for the sin he did not do anyway? Sin of who? What is the sin he did? Where is justice? Why the other child in the hadith he will go to hell? He did not do any sin. So Muslims they give you speeches trying to play the game of logic when they are the one is coming from the sink of non-logic. Islam is coming from a toilet seat full of poo-poo. And the more you dig, the more you smell bad. Where is the logic here? Actually, if you see how he slew this child, you will not believe it. If we go to the verse, the one is speaking about he slew him. 1874. We can go here. And we can read the interpretation which is made by the Muslims about this verse. So they set off after leaving the ship, making their way on foot until they met a boy who had not yet reached the puberty, playing with other boys. So he's what? Is what guys? This is the Muslim book. This is the Muslim translation. This is not me speaking. He is a boy playing with other boys. But there is something wrong with this boy. The Prophet Al Khadr, he did not like his face. Eh, something I don't like him. So, what he did, the Prophet of Allah. So, he, Al Khadr, slew him. By slitting his throat, I mean, this is amazing and so beautiful and so merciful. He did not even ask him, What's your name? What do you think? That it's a boy, a boy playing with his friends. The Prophet of Allah, he grabbed him and he slit his throat with a knife while he lay down, or there's or by tearing his head off. What? Well, what is that? And Allah praising this prophet who is doing this because this is the act of wisdom to slay a boy who commit no sin yet. He slit his throat, he took his head off, and now look what he's saying too with his hand or by smashing his head against a wall what i mean this is absolute justice and mercy all of this because this is a boy and we fear when he grow up he will do not or he will not be a good boy Where is the where is the Abdul who posts for us that a person should not pay for the sin of others? Where is the Abdul who posts for us from the Quran that Quran is in agreement with the Bible saying that nobody should pay for the sin of anyone? This guy he did not do any sin. For the sin of who? He is being slaughtered. And that is when an agreement of the other hadith we showed you that a child who is infant yet he might go to hell for Allah the crazy God it's up to him you know he's Modi he don't have rules do we have any Muslim would like to call any brave Muslim I hope I'm not insulting by saying a brave because Muslim get offended but doesn't matter you say you say a smart Muslim he get offended you say a stupid Muslim he get offended you say a brave he get offended Al Khadr is a name coming from a fiction story. Anyone know the story of Gilgamesh? Who knows the story of Gilgamesh? Anyone heard of it, Gilgamesh? Anyone? This is an old ancient story spread all over the Middle East 
from the Persian area to the Arabian area between the Aramaic about a guy who was seeking youth the fountain of youth the fountain of youth actually it is here if we look if we read the hadith we will find that the, the reference here we will find that he found the fountain of youth uh, if we go here uh, I don't want to change the topic but maybe just for the sake of education If you read here in this verse, it says, "فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَجْمَعَ," which the 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 uh, when they uh, uh, they reach the area which two seas they meet, you know, or like a location, they forgot their their uh, whale. What they have a whale with them? What is that? And this is in chapter eighteen, verse number sixty-one, and that's supposedly uh, about a story or the story saying. That when Moses he was bragging about himself being the prophet of God who God spoke to him and he asked God he asked Allah uh, There is anyone better than me for you. He said yes There is a someone he is better than you one of my servants. His name is Al-Khudr So Moses told him okay, how he's better than me. He said yes he Said how I can go and meet him and learn from him. So now Allah he told him go and you keep walking and going until you find this guy how I will find this guy That is the sign The sign is when you lose your whale or your fish as they translated If we go here <clears throat> All right So when they reach the the juncture between the two uh, the two between and the two seas, so according to to uh, to the legions, you know, guys, they, you know the country is called Bahrain. Bahrain. Who who know Bahrain? It's 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 in the Gulf, like it close to uh, Emirat and Kuwait and you know Qatar, Bahrain. That is Bahrain. That area is supposed to be called Bahrain because it's meet between two water. But according to the story here, it's me. It's a, it's a it's a location where it met, or let us say, uh, two seas meet, which is the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean. Which is very stupid because Mediterranean and uh, Persian Gulf they never met. You know, if you go to different interpretation, let me show you. Uh... Let us see which one. Ta, 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 ta. Uh, maybe the verse after it, they are explaining about it more. Anyway, so when they reach that area, they forgot supposedly their uh, uh, their fish. But then, when they when they like they remember the fish, they say, "Oh, where is the fish? The fish is gone." What happened that when Moses uh, you know and his boy he have a boy with him they were uh, washing or preparing themselves for to eat uh, a drop of the water or the water which they use from the fountain of youth but they do not know that this is the fountain of youth reach to the dead fish the fish come back to life and escape and this is how they recognize that this is the place where they should meet with al khudr because he is named al khudr for he is drinking from that water so as you see here he said do you see in other words remember when we sheltered at the rock at the location indeed i forget the fish and none but the satan made me forget which a shaitan uh, forget the fish all right and then he continue saying and he made me forget it, okay. And the and the fish it made its way to the sea. But, but uh, ask yourself how this fish made its way to the sea. This is supposed to be a dead fish. What do you mean the fish went to the sea? Why well, how would this happen? They were carrying a fish for food. Moses asked him, bring the fish so we can eat. And now the fish is gone. The fish made its, its way to the sea. Well, what happened? 
simply when they were in that location the fish was touched by some of that water and then it came back to life because this is the fountain of life you know uh, uh, the story of fountain of lives is not something new it's coming from like you know you see it in many movies actually uh, I think it, it, it's exists in the even the parrot of the Caribbean right so you will find it in tons of stories exist long time ago long 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 before Islam it's from the legions that there is a fountain of life or the fountain of youth so here you will see uh, he said oh maybe we lost the fish uh, when we were you know close to that uh, place you know uh, this is a sign for us of the presence of the one we whom we seek because Allah told him that when you lose the fish that is the place where you should meet with Al Khadr. But nobody's asking how he lost the fish, which obviously came back to life and seek its way to the sea. And here you will see it says, <clears throat> Then so they found one of our servants, namely Al Khadr, whom we had given mercy from us, according to the opinion of etc. Blah blah blah. Okay, let us see. <clears throat> Uh, look, look at the story here. God then revealed for him, following, truly there is a servant of mine. At the juncture of the two seas, he is more knowledgeable than you, as I told you. So Musa then asked, Oh my Lord, how I do reach to him? He, God, said, Take a fish with you and place it in the basket. You see, as, the, as you see, the fish is dead. And the place where you lose the fish will be the place where he is. So how we will find Al Khadr? The GPS is the fish, the dead fish. By the way, I went all over to Asia, and the customs uh, when I was passing through China and Philippines, they asked me why you are carrying a fish with you. I said it's a GPS. It is the GPS of Allah. For Allah told me, when you lose the fish, it means you arrive to Manila. All right? How I, how I will know I went to Manila already? And when I lose the fish, that means well, this is where I'm going to meet the guys. I'm going to meet them there. This is the location of the CBN, the, 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 the CBN Asia TV station where I did my interview. How I will know to go? I mean, I need a fish, dead fish. So I put the fish in the basket, and when you lose it, this is the place where you will meet our guy. He, Musa, took a fish and placed it in the basket and dropped it together with his lad, lad Joshua, son of Nun. So he have a boy, he is his servant, his name Joshua, son of Nun. I mean, at least here in the story, there's something real. A Jewish guy, his name is coming funny, Joshua, the son of Nun. Until they reached the rock. Ah, this is the rock. They placed their head back and fell asleep. <sighs> The fish began to move. How it began to move? Like how the fish come to move? That is the mystery here. But later we will find that the reason the fish is starting moving because those guys they touch the fountain, the water from the fountain of youth, and then some of the water touched the fish, and the fish came back to life. All right. By the way, if any of you is suffering from a problem, you might die, etc. Just call me. I have the fountain of life. I have a lot of water for you. Just come to my faucet. Okay. So a fish began to move about in the basket until it's escaped from it and fell into the sea. I mean, what? And it made its way into the sea in an amazing manner. That's a miracle. God held back the flow of the water, preventing it, pre preventing it from eng engulf eng eng engulfing. I'm not sure if I'm saying the word correctly. So what, what Allah He said or what He did, the fish jump in the ocean and made it way. Like when you are doing a ski with a jet ski, the difference is that Allah He hold the water as it is 
to leave a mark and this mark is like a rock which mean the, the 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 ocean the waves the water became like a rock so uh engulfing the fish forming a kind of arch over it when he awoke his companion joshua forgot to inform him of what had happened i mean look how this what kind of joshua this joshua is i mean how an idiot he are all this a fish come back to life and the fish opened the ocean and the ocean split to pieces and became like a rock and he inform he forgot to tell him and how come Musa did not see when he woke up that this is happening anyway let it go let it go and so they continue their journey on uh, so for the reminder okay until the night until the night and the morning the second day Musa said to his lead bring our basket where he says it made it his way to the sea in an amazing manner this is how the story happened I mean this is must be a true story I'm, I'm sure many of you are convinced and I don't know how many of you feel like converting to Islam uh, and those things by the way happen to all of us in the Middle East you know like I remember once uh, my dad he was uh, having a fish in the basket and uh, we reached the, uh, you know, I'm coming from the Middle East, as you know, and the Middle East is just in the borders with Brazil. And right away when we cross Brazil, we, we enter into, uh, you know, uh, uh, China. And then, like, when we are going through China, we found a little fountain, and we asked the Chinese, what is that? They said to us, and I'm going to say exactly what they said, which means we have no idea. So my dad, he decided to wash his fish so he can make a barbecue with it. And the second the fish touched the water, the water froze and became Pepsi Cola. And this is a true story can be found in the Quran, if you don't believe me. I mean, everything here is convincing. Who can reject such a story? And the funny, the Muslims, they try to tell us stories about science, Quran, and science. What are you talking about, Abdul? Let us continue. Hmm. Okay. So now, finally, they met together. But maybe, hold on, let, let me see here. In Ibn Abbas. I want to see why the fountain of youth is not appearing. Now. Uh, I, I want to find you the fountain of youth. Hold on. I'm not satisfied with this. I want to show you where it says word by word the fountain of youth. Because some they might say, well, okay, you told us fountain of youth, where it is. Uh, we did not see it yet. So hold on, let me let me find it. The fountain of youth. Where are you, Fountain of Youth? Hmm, I want to find it in English. I can find it in Arabic easy, but I want to find it in our English. Uh, hmm. 
All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe this one here at the C. I gave you the reference before. I don't know if any, how many of you have it. Uh, but I want to... <clears throat> anyway, the story of Fountain of Youth, youth is nothing new it's as I said this is kind of uh, something exist in many legions before long long before Islam and uh, Muhammad is just copying from those stories and he is adding them to his uh, fictions Quran fiction you know uh, let's see Remind me next time I do the. We don't want to like stay here long. Uh, uh, to show you the the story of the fountain of youth. Uh, can I have a Muslim in my Facebook? And I give them this link. Yeah, yeah. He can he can call me any Muslim, especially if he are saying he's a Quran teacher. He can call me. You do not need to ask me, guys. Don't tell me. I have a Muslim. He wanna call him. Call you. Him call. I have no problem. Sheikh he is big, he is small. I don't care. Don't tell me he is a, a Quran teacher. I believe none of them knows anything about the Quran. Let him call me. So anyway, this is what happened here. And the, the, you know, we were talking about this boy who was slaughtered, right? Uh, let him call me. Let him call me. Don't tell me. The boy was slaughtered for no reason. He did not commit any sin. Yet he was a slaughter, and this is all is coming in a fiction story about a prophet of God. His name is Al Khudr, which is in other stories, you know, is coming from uh, uh, you know the Aramaic old legions and the Persian legions about a guy who seek life, eternal life, by drinking from the fountain of youth. Now I wish I can get this fountain of youth because you can you cannot imagine how much money I can make from women alone. All women they will buy it in, in any any price, you know. If I can get this, if I can get like one liter every like six months, man oh man. So as you see here, when the Muslims speak about logic and reasoning for people to go to hell or people not to be punished unless they do sin. So where is the sin logic here? And the funny, the Muslim, he says to us that the Quran confirm what is written in the previous verses in the Bible, in the Gospel, and in the Torah. That is absolutely false. Quran is copying from the Bible, but it's a contradiction of its own. As an example, as long the Muslims agreed that no person should be playing for a sin except itself. And as you see, this is the Muslim post, not my post. How Muhammad in different hadith, he said that Allah will place the sin of the Muslims on the Christians and the Jews. Uh, let us see where we can find the hadith. Where is the logic here? We just show we just showed you our Muslims saying to us that a person should be blamed only for his sin. Okay. So how the Muslims sins, which is going to be equal to mountains. Will be placed on the Christians and the Jews. 
All right. There we go. Let's see where we can find the hadith. Hold on. We need the one from Sahih Muslim. Let us try this one. Mm. All right, read with me carefully, please. Finally, we found it, and this is a Sahih hadith, which means a correct and it's fat. The word come, uh, there would come people amongst the Muslims on the day of resurrection, which with as heavy sin as mountain, and Allah would forgive them, and He would place there in their stead the Jews and the Christians. <laughs> okay, no screen. Thank you for telling me. Do you see it, guys? This Abdul was saying to us that in chapter 6, verse 164, Allah said that every soul should be plain for its own sin. So what kind of a stupid justice? You blame the sin of the Muslims on me just because I'm a Christian. This is how you know that a prophet is a false prophet or he is a true prophet when he is not consistent with his own statements. Do we have any Muslim would like to call? Do we have any brave Muslim? He have the courage to call. Where is the justice? And not only that, you see the Muslims, they try to say to you that you Christians, you have a wrong understanding of God, of heaven, of hell, of punishment. Guess what? According to Islam, Muslim prophets, they have wrong understanding of all of this. According to Muslims and according to Muhammad Musa's as an example Let us go here Musa's himself according to Islam he was Getting wrong information and he understand The original sin of Adam differently You see when we speak about original sin the Muslims they believe that there's no original sin That's what they say, but in fact they do as an example Uh, read with me carefully Sahih Muslim the book of marriage which means the book of actually F word it's not book of marriage the book of Nukah Muhammad said not me had not been for Eve women have never acted unfaithfully toward their husband. Actually, it doesn't say that. It says they will not betray their husbands. And actually, this is better translation here. 
So Muslims, they say to us that we don't believe in the original sin, but yet Muhammad, he have making his own popo again. How you say there is no original sin, but you are blaming the sin of women, specifically here women, betraying their husband, and the reason they betray their husband is Eve. What is the connection of Eve a few thousand years ago and the women betraying her husband 2018? And how Eve, she betrayed her husband? What exactly she did? She slept with someone? What she did? Any Muslim can explain to us? She was dating other guy beside Adam? She made an account in uh, uh, harmony.com and she was uh, chatting with different guy where Adam, the poor guy, he was looking for apples. How Eve, she betrayed her husband. She ate from the apple. Is that betrayal? But she ate too. She, her husband, both they ate from it. You see, the Muslims, by, by the way, they say to you that the Bible blame the women for what happened to Adam that's what they say to you the fact it is Muhammad who blame Eve for what happened to every one of us today and supposedly based on this story we men are the victims of women it can be true sometime you know but not necessarily always let us say 99% of the cases <laughs> just joking so according to Muhammad, all men are victims of Eve and its sisters. <clears throat> There's a woman, her name is Eve, was the wife of Adam, and the rest of Eve's are the same. They are just a copy-paste. And we are victims of those Eves. This is why we men, we should gather together and we make a party against women. What do you think, guys? Uh and here you will see something more funny actually Muhammad he blamed the Jews for your meat to be decay I why 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 the meat is being damaged because of the Jews you see if there's no Jews my friend we will not need to have a refrigerator do you see how much money the Jews are costing us the reason for your food to be damaged it is the Jews they blame the Jews for anything even the food food I mean this is food will not damage if there's no Jews. All right? Uh, we have a guy, his name, Arab nationalist. What a joker. He is saying Christians and Muslims, they have they should unite together. Unite about what? About penises and vagina, raping women of the neighbor, attacking the European and rape the blondie? What do you mean we, we unite together? About what? About women, they are this, the devil and we should beat them? We unite with you with what? About what? That wife we sh should be beaten by the husband? What unity you are seeking? Seeking unity with the devil and his followers. Now, not only that. Based in this hadith, Muhammad, he is taking sin back all the way to Eve. And that's supposedly the sin of the women. What about the sin of the man? Look what happened here. In different hadith, Muhammad, he said, <coughs> read with me this story, which I find it an amazing story from Muhammad mouth. But I want to give you uh, more details. Hold on. Read carefully with me, please. Remember this Abdul. I'm going to put his post again in the screen just to remind you of the stupidity of the Muslims. Quran chapter 6 verse 164 is the other than Allah I should desire as Lord he is the Lord blah 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 and every soul earn not blames except against itself so you will pay only for your sin question 
Adam was kicked out of heaven for which sin? Who is a Muslim want to answer me? According to Islam, what is the sin Adam he did to earn punishment and be kicked out of heaven? Who is the smart Muslim want to give me the answer? Any Muslim? I mean, do you see how simple the question? But no Muslim. You see, the Muslims, after I stop my broadcast, suddenly all of them, they are they have a mouth, and suddenly they start posting. Not to mention the dirty words they say to me in Arabic. Supposedly nobody understands what they are saying. But where are they? Who is the Muslim want to tell me? What is the sin Adam did? Made him lose his place in heaven. Who is the Muslim want to tell me? Should we call a friend? Hmm? Anyone? What is the reason? I want to know. What is the reason made Adam leave heaven? What happened? What happened? Any Muslim can tell us. Just to show you how stupid Muhammad is. Are you ready, Muslims? To show you how stupid Muhammad is? Read with me carefully. Muhammad, he claimed that Adam and Moses, they went to YouTube and they have a debate. So Adam, he received a phone call from Moses. What? Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, obviously he is very sure. Let me close this here. Too many things open, all right. So Adam, he gave Moses, or Moses gave Adam a ring. And remember, Adam, according to Muslims, he was coming from India. In case you do not know, Adam is an Indian. Uh, some Muslim scholars they believe that he is or he landed when he landed in Sri Lanka today, which used to be part of India. So Adam he answered Moses, and Adam said. Assalamu alaikum. Moses, he's a Jew. He said to Adam, Khabibi Adam, Khabibi, Khabibi. Where you been, Khabibi? I was trying to reach for you. Are you there, Adam? So Adam, he answered, Brother Musa, I really, really, I'm so glad that you called me. I'm so grateful that finally, I am your grand-grandfather, and you are Musa, the prophet of the dude, is calling me right now. By the way, can you tell me what your phone number so I can call you back in case we load connecting? Because I am right now in a very, very far territory. So Musa said to Adam, Khabibi, my grandfather Adam, Khabibi, I'm going to give you my number, but be careful you call me because we Jews, we don't like to spend money. You have to call me, okay? I'm not going to call you, sorry, because this is long distance call. Adam, he answered, no problem, no problem, Habibi. I'm going to answer you. I'm going to call you every day. And now, Adam and Moses, after this introduction, they get into serious business. So Moses says to Adam, 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 my grandfather, you are our father, father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. What a surprising, I mean, Adam and the other side, he was like, what the heck? Who told this guy this? So Adam, he answered him, answered Moses, the Jewish Moses, said to him, Moses, 
I'm very disappointed with you. Obviously, you have a wrong understanding for why I'm kicked out of heaven. I want to know who is the one who told you that. I'm pretty sure that you are watching the videos of a Christian prince. Yes, I'm very sure. Don't say no. Don't say no. I'm very sure you are watching the video of a Christian prince, and this is why you get this idea, which is a very, very wrong idea. Let me explain to you. First of all, O Moses, Allah favored you with his talk. He talked to you directly. While the poor me, and I'm your grandfather, Allah did not talk to me directly. He sent me an email. What the heck? As I know, the Quran story says that Adam, he spoke to Allah directly too. Actually, in different hadith, Muhammad, he said that too. He said that Adam spoke to Allah directly. But here, Muhammad, he claimed that the only one who spoke to Allah directly is Adam, is, is Moses. Moses. <laughs> So at the end, we have two prophets. Both of them, they spoke to Allah directly according to Islam. So what this is stupid story is about. So from the beginning, Muhammad, he started doing poo, poo and making contradiction. And now he continue. Adam continues saying, and he wrote the Torah for you with his own hands. Do you, do you, huh? look, look, do you blame me for action which Allah had written for me in my fate? Forty years, forty years before he created me. What? The sin of Adam was written forty years before he created you, and you cannot blame him for the sin. Yeah, I was trying to make 40 like those who they say go like here here Adam is putting goal go like wow so he's like what's wrong with you man I did not commit sin this is a sin Allah he put in my fate it's not my fault 40 years 40 years before he created me he wrote it in my fate and look what Muhammad continues saying. So Adam confuted, which means conf like he, he uh, you know, he won the debate. Moses, what? Adam is the winner? This hadith is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6614. Any Abdul? Now, question to all the Abduls who they are listening. How come Moses he have a wrong understanding for original sin to the point he understand it the same as the Christians? I remember, according to this story, which is amazing story, how Moses and Adam they have this debate when both of our both of them are dead. Any Abdul can tell us after death? This is after death. Hey guys, who want to debate me after death? I promise you, after I die, I'm going to give Adam a call and I will ask him the same question. Both are dead. How Adam and Moses are speaking and Muhammad he said it clearly actually yesterday we spoke about this that the only the first one Allah will resurrect from death is him Muhammad and all the prophets they pass away so what do you mean Adam and Moses they are debating when the debate happened and what do you mean that the sin of Adam was created or put in the fate of Adam 40 years before his existence that's mean there's no reason for Adam to go out of heaven. That's mean all the story in the Quran is a fiction story, stupid story. Adam was out of heaven for no just. He did not do anything wrong. As you see, he's saying to him, you cannot blame me for a sin I did not do. It is written for me. 
It is written before I was created 40 years before my creation Allah he wrote a story he says I will make a one a guy his name is Adam and I will make him commit sin And you are telling me Muslims that a person should not pay unless He do his own sin. So what is the sin of Adam? Where is the sin of Adam? Madness stupidity Garbage in garbage out Do we have any Abdul would like to call Knowledgeable Abdul ignorant Abdul we take all kind of Abdul Big Abdul small Abdul Short Abdul tall Abdul. I don't care Who is the brave Abdul is going to give me a ring and explain to us what's going on? Anyone? By the way, today um, I was working with the uh, uh, with the uh, the person who is helping me with the proofreading. I appreciate really this person, and uh, the book about sexuality in Islam is going to be out very soon. So uh, actually, the two books are ready. We are just doing the proofreading. So tomorrow we will finish the first book. And maybe in two days from now or three days is going to be out and published all right and the, the one after is going to be maybe next week because all of them both are ready uh, I just proofreading so uh, for those who like to have it this book will be very fantastic I'm not doing advertising for it you know my books is full is a treasure of information as you know because uh, uh, the topic uh, you know bring more and when you make a book it's more it's different from when you like make a screen, you know, everything I'm gathering right now is just like life It's not like sitting and searching for things and you know, putting things together. It's just life that topic I don't prepare for topic. It just it goes by itself So the book will be out very soon for those who like to have their own copy and I hope you guys you will like it and don't forget after you uh, get the book uh, to make uh, uh, a review an honest review don't do what the Muslims do the Muslims they go to my uh, page in, uh, in Amazon and he gave me one star even he did not buy the book uh, and they think that by giving me one star that will make people not to read my book but actually that is the the, 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 the bad idea they think uh, because a person who is interested to make a review of a book he never read because Amazon show you who is the one who bought the book and who is the one who did not and when a Muslim he give me one star that is ten stars for me if the Muslim give me five stars it's mean my book is a rubbish is garbage you know what I mean the second you see a Muslim giving somebody stars to his book it's mean this book is garbage so it is an honor for me to receive one star from the Muslims It's going to be a, this like let's say a, 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 a Shame that Muslims will say to me God bless you Because that's mean there's something wrong with me. I'm not saying the truth So all my books in Amazon Actually, there's a guy uh, from Germany he asked the Muslims to go immediately and to give a false review of my book in German language and uh, uh, You know uh, um, He say go right now and do they translate for me do go right now and do give uh, one star for this Christian Prince You know, but that did not make people not to read my books the German people they are actually actually not you know uh, uh, like if you go and see what the German they are saying about my book, you will not believe it Because this is the first time they see a reference they never heard before and this is the whole point It's not to say what just copy paste from others. There's many people they have books about Islam But it's just a copy of others. They are not really even making a book It's just collection of ideas from somebody and putting it there So I hope the coming book which is going to be about sexuality in Islam. I did not make the name final yet but mostly is going to be uh, uh, mating in captivity of Allah. Maybe, mostly, I don't know. We will see. We have a few days to decide. And let us see if you guys, you will like it. 
Now we go back to the topic. Do we have any Abdul who have the courage and the knowledge? I, I am calling today. Today we are not getting lucky. Like yesterday, we got two Abduls calling. Any Abdul would like to call? What kind of logic your religion has when it's come to sin and going? What is the reason to go to hell? What is the reason to get to get out of heaven? No reason. It's just a God playing games. He made Adam commit sin. Adam had no choice. He wrote it for him in his fate. Forty years before he created him. Then he punished him for a sin have nothing to do with him. Where is justice and where is stupidity here? Where is intelligence? 1060. What about 1060? Quran 1060. What do you want to explain about it? <clears throat> do you want me to explain the Quran? The whole verse? All right. I, I don't find like you know a reason to uh, to go there, but uh, you know, no problem. <clears throat> Uh, this is a chapter of Eunice uh, because you see you might think that this is about uh, it's like it's a reason to go to heaven or hell but as we showed you this is not not true in that verse it says that those who they are lying to Allah in the judgment day uh, you know let me let me show you the let me show you the verse first let us go there. <clears throat> Oops, we are typing in English. All right. <laughs> Oh boy, where is the verse? Okay, this is the verse. وَمَا ظَنَّ الَّذِينَ كِفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا وَقِيَامًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَدُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى النَّاسِ Okay, this is a translation of Yusuf Ali. And what think those who invent lies against Allah of the day of judgment? Verily Allah is full of etc. So, you know, you know, if you say lies about Allah, Allah is going to punish you in the judgment day. But as you see, lies is made by Allah about Allah. Because if Adam, he commits sin against, when, when somebody commits sin, the sin is against who? It's against God. The sin of Adam was against who? Was against no man, because there's no man exist at that time. Correct? You see, today you might commit sin against your neighbor, against your brother, against your wife, against your daughter, against your son against uh, your co-worker or somebody but this is Adam his sin was against only against God so what is the lies Adam he did to be paying for it in the judgment day and the funny the Muslim they say to us that Adam was a prophet of God a prophet of God but he yet he could not handle it to stay in heaven he was bad so he was kicked out no he was not bad who told you he was bad? Allah, he made him bad. Allah, he is the one who made the sin of Adam exist. So actually Adam, according to Islam, is a victim. And at the same time, the verse you asked me to explain, chapter 10, verse number 60, it does not make sense for very simple reason. Let me show you why. If we go to different hadith, <coughs> we will find this I need to find hold on here is the hadith mm. let us go here Uh, 
Okay. Okay, read with me, please, carefully. This is Sahih Hadith from Sahih Al Bukhari. From Sahih Al Bukhari. The Messenger of Allah, the truthful, I mean, do you see how much truthful he is? The truly inspired, everything is inspiration. I mean, my friend, this is not from him, this is from God. And then he speak about the truly inspiration. He says, you are collected in the womb of your mother for 40 days. But the fact, this is about, you are a sperm for 40 days. And then you are a, a piece of meat for 40 days. And then you are a piece of a flesh for 40 days. And supposedly, this is the true inspired prophet. Have you ever heard of somebody believe in such a garbage that you are a sperm in the belly of your mother? Not the womb, as he says. In Arabic, it says, Fi batni umme. In the belly of his mother. So you are in the belly of your mother for 40 days as a sperm. And then for 40 other days, equal days, as a piece of a flesh. Sorry, a, a clot. And then equal days as a piece of a flesh. Total is 120 days. However, this is not what my I'm looking for here. It says, then the soul breathed into him. And by Allah, a person among you or may do deeds of the people of fire till there is no, there's only a cupid or an arm distance between him and the fire. So this person here, Muhammad, has given you an, uh, an example. One of you will be doing the act of people of hellfire until almost there like there's a distance of an arm between you and hell that's it you are entering hell but what that is written which means written by allah by 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 the angel and his order proceed and does and he does the deeds of people paradise and he enter it so as you see you don't go to paradise because of your work you go to paradise if allah wrote for you to do the deeds of paradise it's not your choice as you see this person he is almost in hell he is almost in hell he is in the door of the hell almost one arm between him and hell <coughs> and then when he reach almost like an arm between him and heaven and hell sorry and hell fire as you see then what is written by Allah will take place. Written by Allah, how? This is your destiny, this is your fate. And is going to proceed. And then he does the deeds of people of paradise and he enter it. So it's not your choice to go to paradise or not. His choice was to do the deeds of hellfire. The choice of Allah, your fate, is to do the deeds of of paradise so you enter it so it's not you not your work not your deed not etc it was what Allah wrote for you as your fate so if we go back to the statement we saw from the Muslim where he said that every person everyone should pay for its own sin every soul should pay for its own sin where is the where is the where is the logic in this Every soul should be blamed for its own sin. Okay. So how your prophet, he say this. He is not going to be blamed for his sin. His sin is gone. He was doing the act of hellfire all his life, as you see in the front of your eyes. To the point, almost he is in hell, which means all his life, what is left is little, very little, because almost one cubit between him and hellfire let us say you are going to live for 80 years so now you are uh, 79 years and six months so for almost let us say 50 60 years of your life you are doing an act of people of hellfire then in the last few months in your life or maybe few weeks or maybe few days 
you will be saved how what is written by Allah as your fate is going to proceed and you will do the deeds of people of paradise and you enter it which mean everything you did before that point of sin it doesn't count for Allah even though it was most of your life to the point you are almost in hellfire what count is what Allah wrote for you and this is what is going to proceed and that is the reason for you to go to hell or to heaven and actually Muhammad he continues saying read with me carefully and a man may do the deeds of paradise the people of paradise so this is now the opposite a person doing all his life the deeds of paradise and now almost he is in paradise until there is only a cubit or two between him and paradise and then that writing proceed and he does the deeds of people of the fire and he enter it <laughs> so all the stupid talk in the Quran and you you know if you do good deeds and uh, so somebody should not be punished for the sin of somebody else we found that all of this is absolutely false we showed you one by one a child in Islam he will go to hell a baby child even though he is of a Muslim family why because Allah he decided before he created him if you will go to hell or to heaven this is the whole point it's your fate Muslim believe in a pure fate it's not your deeds as you see the deeds here which will make you enter hellfire is the deeds of Allah this is what Allah wrote for you if you read with me the story here carefully again you will see that the deed of the person the real deed of the person qualify him to enter heaven read with me carefully and the man may do the deeds of people of paradise till there is only one cubit only a cubit or two between him and paradise this is his deed this is his real deed then what will happen what is written by Allah proceed and he does the deed of people of fire and he enter it so your deed doesn't count it is the deeds of Allah which he wrote for you before he created you how stupid that justice is do we have any Muslim want to say something do we have any Abdul he want to say something <clears throat> that is God that is God that is a joke that is a God who is playing games with us and we are just his toys where is where is God here so why he is saying to us those who do good deeds they will go to heaven and why he is saying to us those who do jihad they will go to heaven all of this is a lie it's what is written it is what is written previously you convert to Islam you don't convert to Islam it doesn't matter it's what is written Allah created for heaven people of heaven before he created us so all of this is a lie well nothing new welcome to Islam and why Allah blaming Eve there here for the sin if Allah he is the one who wrote the sin of Adam and he is the one who wrote the sin of Eve correct is it him uh, Muhammad he said that Adam said to Musa and he won the debate when he said to him are you blaming me for my fate a fate written for me 40 years before his creation my creation Who is the stupid here? And how you say to us Muslims that that chapter is speaking of nobody will pay for the sin of others when the Quran, or sorry, the Hadith says it clearly that Allah will pay, will put the sin of the Muslims on us. Now, if we go to the to the Muslims trying to say to us. That the Christian believe that Jesus when they say Jesus paid for their sin they try to fool you make you believe that the Christians are a bunch of stupid and they think or they believe that 
Jesus was a sacrificed like you know when the pagan they sacrifice something so their sin will be gone this is not what Christianity is about Abdul we believe that Jesus died because of our sin because he came to save us he don't have to die Jesus said nobody can take my life from me I lay myself nobody can take me I lay myself down so he don't have to but because he loved us, he went all the way to the end. Because of our sin, he died. Because if we are not sinners, we will not kill him. Mankind, they killed him. And we are saved by his blood. Doesn't mean that just because Jesus died, we are saved. This is not absolutely false understanding of Christianity. Jesus said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So there's many people they will say Lord Lord but they don't really dare to be following the Lord they are following the devil so we don't have a free heaven a check says oh this guy his name is a Christian Prince he go to heaven because he say Lord Lord that is in Islam you Muslims contradict yourself and you say if you say Shahada and I can show you tons of hadith from your prophet. You go to heaven. The one who say 33 times, Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim, Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim, Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim, he go to heaven. The one who say the name of Allah 99 times, you go to heaven. I mean, there is millions of reasons to go to heaven. The one who kiss the black stone, Allah will whip, wipe his, his sin. How does this happen? We don't believe in this garbage. It's you who believe in this. Our sin is not deleted. It is not. You see, the second you commit a sin, it is your sin. Our son will be forgiven, not deleted. And we are not going to be automatically going to heaven just because we accept Jesus to be our Lord. We have to follow his step. We don't believe that Jesus, he wrote our faith to go to heaven. Jesus said, the trees who don't give good fruits will be cut off and thrown in hellfire. So to be a follower of Jesus is not enough to say, I believe in you, Jesus. You have to give the fruits of Jesus. It is you, Muslims, who believe in the fictions of saying Shahada, you go to heaven. It is Muhammad he convinced you that if you do make donation for Muhammad, give him money, you go to heaven. If you ever see a Christian person saying, if you donate, you go to heaven, this guy is a fraud. If you remember, Muhammad was scaring the women, saying to them, most of you women, you are going to go to hellfire. However, if you if you pay me, you will go to heaven. <coughs> Hello. Hello, CB. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for your explanation about the hadith, um, right. about the Moses, and the funny story about the uh, about the magical fish and so on. But my question is that how how the acceptance of uh, those Muslims about the additional stories, because it looks like that those stories are only um, myths, legends, as you said, and also uh, funny stories, and they don't explain the Quran. They're just adding on stories on the Quran. It's and not, how do they accept that? It's not up to them to accept or not. You know, if the Quran is saying so, the Quran is saying so. What they can do? I mean, this is this is in the Quran. The Quran says that uh, Suleiman have a genie. Suleiman he have a chair. Uh -huh. Suleiman he died in the chair for a year. I mean, have you ever heard of somebody dying standing? Actually, not not in chair, standing for a year, and nobody noticed, not even his wives. You know, madness. So yeah. so uh, uh, the Muslim have no choice to say I accept, I don't accept, because it is in the Quran. Either he accept or he don't. 
and if you don't he leave Islam that's it he's an apostate so chapter 18 alone is enough for anyone to see that Islam is nothing but a collection of stupid stories the Prophet Suleiman go into the valley of the ants you can go and find this in the Legion of the Jews those are fairy tale mm -hmm. stories the Jews believe in them and written in their in their history and Muhammad he copied it and he put it there as if it's a true story uh, uh, the story of the seven sleepers this is a fiction story written by a Christian bishop long before Islam about seven youth who they've been uh, right. uh, uh, discriminated that uh, they would be killed so they run for their life etc Muhammad he took it he put it in the chapter 18 and he make it as part of his religion as if it's a true story so chapter 18 let us say is the basket uh, 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 you know of, of, of Santa Claus the Islamic version yes however Santa Claus is a true story actually at least not like Muhammad you see even Santa Claus his side of the story is true like he don't come from the chimney this is false you know but Santa Claus is a true person but the Santa Claus Muhammad who collect those stories in his basket he is a false prophet collecting stories have no ground except they are fictions and Muslims they cannot okay. say they cannot say we cannot accept because the second they say that they have to leave Islam I see okay can, can, a, can a Muslim um, say that Suleiman he have no flying carpet he cannot ooh, this is in yeah, chapter 18 right. can he say that yeah, Suleiman like he don't have a ring can he say that yeah. Suleiman he don't have a bird who go and look for women for him can they say that Suleiman did not speak to the end uh, they cannot and they yeah and they don't go to the other the other verses of the Quran like what we do Christians <laughs> do what we do like uh, if you want to explain give explanation or exegesis about the New Testament. We go through the, the Old Testament, right? Uh, but they don't. They just add on stories, myths and legends from the other stories. It's like syncretism from other sources. Don't you agree? Well, you know, some of the stories are coming directly from Muhammad, who he himself copied from others, as I said. And there is some of the stories is just a collection of, let us say, the Muslims are trying to explain something. If you remember, uh, I don't know if you yesterday you were watching. You were watching yesterday. Uh, okay. Which one? Yesterday we have a uh, we have a Muslim caller. He said, "I asked him where the the names on the story of the three messengers of the Messiah in the Quran is coming uh -huh. from." He said, "Obviously, those this interpretation is coming from the Bible. All right, is copying from the Bible. All right, so." The, he, the Muslim admitted that in their own interpretation for the Quran in order to understand the Quran They have to go and copy Story from the Bible Okay, uh -huh. so how you copy okay. a story from a book you don't even approve Yeah, yeah, that's right, but yet no Muslim but no Muslim complain about it No Muslim say this is false. You see until yeah. now Like when they find somebody like me he got them busted with the stupidity they have because if you say that the Messiah is the one who sent messengers and those messengers they made miracles in the name of the Messiah That means the Messiah is God for the Messiah. If he is just a prophet, he cannot send the prophets Yeah, so how the Messiah That's... send the three messengers they have no answers and the answer is oh look like they are copying from the Bible But the question is why Muslims copy from the Bible if they don't agree with it They are copying to explain right. to you what happened. So it's mean they agree so Islam is a collection yeah. of contradictions stupidity and You have to struggle with your intelligence to find the connection Okay, you know, it's like it's like a broken uh, uh, You know you have a, you have a broken uh, uh, Let's say a piece of a glass sh You know shattered to like a thousand or thousands of pieces and now somebody asking you to put it together That's right. Yeah, yeah. Syncretism. I mean, it's it's a logic uh, pattern. Um, I think that they have. Yeah. Well, you know, this is what we do here. We are trying to make make them see the logic and see the stupidity at the same time, and yeah. we show the reference. We show everything. Uh, I have a second question um, regarding. It's a bit um, far from the topic that you bring today um, about the um, Hajar Aswad mm -hmm. uh, about the <coughs> kissing the black stone. Um, what is the base of uh, Islamic teaching about uh, teaching 
about uh, kissing uh, the holy objects. Is there any uh, law or Islamic law that against that? Because no, what I think no. is that. No. Oh, I see. You know, Muhammad himself he kissed the black stone, and isn't isn't that considered as uh, syric? Well, as long as Muhammad he did it, Muslims don't dare to say such a thing as you said. You know, so Muhammad he did. So it is now a practice for everybody, and nobody want to ask himself why. Actually, even Omar al-Khattab, uh, he said it clearly uh, that uh, uh, you know I know that you are useless and harmless, but because I know that the Prophet he kissed you, I'm kissing you. So uh, Omar mm -hmm. he exposed Muhammad because Muhammad he claimed that the black stone is going, uh, you know, uh, is going to uh, witness for the Muslims in the Judgment Day. Uh, yeah. But how is going to witness for for Muslim in the judgment day? But yet Omar he says they are useless and they are harmless. Uh, I I had a discussion about a debate actually um, through um, through YouTube the, uh, to the, yesterday about this and the ans the only answer that the uh, the person could uh, <laughs> gave is that uh, that oh it's like. Um, uh, the expression of love of God's uh, things because uh, the black stone is uh, sent by God from heaven and it is a holy thing and it's, a, it's in a, a way of expression of love to God. What do you think about that? Well, you know, if uh, this is what the pagan they say, you know, we kiss a stone because the stone have to do most of the pagans don't believe that the stone itself is God. They believe that the stone is a representer of, of God. So because they love God, they kiss the stone. It's the same as the Muslims. It's a stone. You know, what the point okay. of kissing a stone? And then how they can explain that Muhammad said that the black stone is going to have ears and is going to witness in the judgment day. According to Muhammad, the black stone used to be white like milk and the sin of mankind made it black. Yeah. So this yeah. is not a normal stone. This is a magical living stone. This is not just a respect mm -hmm. of God. This is something have to do with God. Muhammad he said it is the right hand of Allah. So if it is just a stone, why it is the right hand of Allah, and how it can be right of hand of Allah if it is a stone? So basically, it's not a shirk, according to uh, Islamic it's law. It's part of Islam. It's no, it's not. It's uh, you know, it is how the Muslim they understand it. You see, uh, actually, even the Quran speak. You see, the Muslim they say that we are Islam is against making statues, right? But the fact the Quran says it clearly that Suleiman he have a genies and those genies they made for him statues and you know they built for him synagogue and statues and if you read the interpretation of those statues it says those are statues of good men like the prophets of God so we see here like as an example uh, if we go in the Quran <coughs> you will see here it says in chapter 34 verse number 13 that yeah. this prophet which is coming from the legion of the Jews nothing new that he yeah. have control of the genie by the black magic he have a ring his ring control the genies and those people they make yeah. for him those genies you know the genie are not not uh, demon as some Christians they think they are creatures made from fire however they are very very powerful so those genies they they made for him statues and images you see the muslim they try to mm. cover they cover this in in their translation but it doesn't work let us see victor translation read with me they made for him what he willed synagogues and the statues basins like yeah. war, you know so who, who is this this is a prophet of god Allah gave him the power to control the genie so they will make for him this. So if his statues are forbidden in Islam, how a prophet of God is making his statues and he put it in the synagogue. Okay. You see okay it? then. Okay, thank you for the answer. You're welcome. CP. All right. You're welcome. Okay. God bless you. Bye bye. See every everything the Muslim they say. If you if you have knowledge, you will find you can find the opposite right away in their books. They say uh, you Christians are pagans. Why we are pagans? They say to you, oh, some Christians they have a status. This has nothing to do with Christianity. This has nothing to do with Christianity. The Bible says it clearly from the book of Genesis: Make no image of in what is above, 
in the sky or what is down on earth that's it and the image here the purpose of image is not to make image to worship not not to make image you can make images no problem so if the image is made in the purpose to worship the image this is a pagan practice Muslims they kiss a stone this stone is an image of what it is an image of a vagina you will see in my coming book that the Arab before Islam they use the women and the man the man he used to place his penis inside the black stone because they believe that this is where the god of fertility, Baal, he provide babies. And the woman, when she have her period, in order to ask this god to fertilize her vagina, she place her hand on her vagina when she have a period, and then she place her hand full of a blood in the black stone. And this is supposedly what the Arab believe, that the black stone became black, because of the sin of mankind because women they put their blood from their vagina on the black stone this is this is why the black stone looked like a vagina it is in the shape of a vagina it was it was made in that shape for a reason and muhammad he uh, abandoned this uh, uh, worship for a while because in the beginning of his life, he was trying to convince the Jews and the Nasara, who they are Christian cult, that I am like you. I worship the same God. This is why he, in the beginning, he stopped praying in the direction of the Kaaba. He was praying in the direction of Jerusalem. He was not kissing the Kaaba. He was not doing Hajj. He stopped doing Hajj. Why? Because at that period of time, he was trying to convince those Christians and those Jews that I am not. A pagan I worship the same God it's your God who sent me a prophet I believe in Isa I believe in Musa but when Muhammad noticed that those Christians will not believe in him anyway or those false Christians and those Jews they will not accept him anyway he turned his face from Jerusalem to Mecca because he's lost he's lost his hope with the Jewish and the Christians so now what he's left is his people, the people who, you see, the Muslim, they say Muhammad was successful to spread Islam. The fact it is not Muhammad who spread Islam. It was the Muslims after Islam. They did invasion and they spread Islam. Muhammad in, in his lifetime, he failed. He failed even to attack the Roman and get the blonde girls as he promised. He wasn't successful. In his time, the people re re were rebellion against him, even after converting to Islam. So when they say that Muhammad was successful, this is a big fat lie. The success was for Bani Umayyah, the caliphate of Umayyah, the family of Umayyah, who Muhammad bribed them to convert to Islam by giving them gold and silver and 100 camel for each. Those people, they took over control and then they start invasion for countries around them and this is how Islam spread. But Muhammad was a big failure and he did not succeed do we have any Muslim here don't ex don't agree any Muslim don't agree <laughs> look like the Muslims today they are uh, in total agreement with the Christian press <laughs> <coughs> anyway so today, uh, I think we cover this, uh, cover everything about the sin of Islam. So, don't if you are a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddha, or even an atheist, don't make the Muslims make you believe that the reason to go to hell or heaven in Islam is you became a Muslim or not, is you doing good deed or bad deed. That's false. We showed you all the proofs and all the reference that this is all have nothing to do with the truth. And the reasons yes uh, call if you want to call me go ahead <clears throat> um, you can call if you want hello Hey, CP, how's it going? Hey, my friend, how was your surgery doing? 
is doing fine. It's healing up, healing up nice. Did you install additional wisdom or additional dish of? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still a little sore from the last surgery. Yeah, thank you for thank you for the brother who was greeting me from Indonesia. I'm glad to hear from you. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> yes, Scott, what do you want to say? Um, <coughs> a, a couple of things. Um, the the last guy who called um was asking about the black stone and why they did it and some of the explanations that they came up with it and such. Um, I, I would just say to him. Uh, like I say to everybody, the the thing to, the that my studies of Islam in, in the short time I've been looking at it, the thing to understand is that it's about Muhammad. The only thing that explains their behavior is that Muhammad is supreme, righteous, good, whatever, whatever word you want to insert, it's all about him. So. Muhammad, when Muhammad speaks, God is spoken. You know, he is God, not Allah, not the Quran. So when you say about why they kissed the black stone, and he's, the answer is Muhammad did it. And, and that's enough. You know, they don't need any Quran verses or Hadith or anything else. All they need to know is that Muhammad did it. And that is enough to justify it to them. Yeah. And, and, it's the same way with any hadith or any verse or anything else. <laughs> it's if it casts Muhammad in a negative light, they'll walk away from it. And if it casts him in a positive light, they'll embrace it. And and they do that on the fly, you know. Uh you do it all the time, um, they they'll you'll have he'll have a book and you say what book you believe in, and they say, Well, let's go to this book. And you go to that book. And then they take it to try to make this point, and then the next verse, it it, it embarrasses them, and then well they don't believe in it, just that quick. Yeah, okay. depend what you say to them, and they play games always, you know. To to uh, it's like you know uh, trying to hold the fish uh, with your hands, and this fish is very slippery, you know. Uh, yeah. This is this is how it is to debate a Muslim is is uh, because the point is not really debating you. Or even answering you is about how to be slippery is about how to play games you know yeah. uh, but anyway uh, uh, they cannot run away from from knowledge if you have the knowledge it doesn't matter how to try you can easy corner them they try to struggle they try to you know uh, but it doesn't work with knowledge it doesn't work. It. yeah try to rationalize it yeah it can work um, if you are just a person who know a few things you know and you are not sharp like you know sometime a Muslim, he said to a Christian, the Quran says, but he never asked him where it says that. You know, can you show me? You know, yeah. so if you are like a simple person who is not uh, familiar with their games and the, how they play games, then they can they can go around it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that said, I've actually had some a couple of hadith I wanted to ask you a question about. Um, I wanted to get in. Uh, Yesterday and do it, but I was trying to listen at work and such and I couldn't you know, I couldn't make time to do it um There are there's a hadith in Ibn Majah mm -hmm. So so in Ibn, Ibn Majah um, I use the I always Excuse me. I forgot how to talk. I always use the in book reference. So it's book 9 hadith 2015 okay. And it's like blank <laughs> There was another one that I had that I saw. It, it had a lot of lines highlighted. You know, it was a lot of lot of Arabic stuff. If you can send me the and, link later, maybe we can speak about it. But there is many hadith are not translated in purpose for a reason. You know, they are there blank. They are not going to show you what is a translation because it's not meant to be translated for it is not good most of the time. Oh, okay. that, and even and, and even and even if uh, hadith is a translated always they play games they don't give an accurate translation you okay. remember you remember the hadith where Aisha she said uh, uh, you know those are my daughters about her toys you know yeah okay mm -hmm. so why why in the hadith translation it doesn't say that 
it says that they, they are my daughters. You know, in the hadith okay. in Arabic, it says they are my daughters. Muhammad he uh, took the uh, uh, took the. Uh, Uh, the curtain away mm. and he saw the dolls and he asked her what is this she said those are my daughters but if we read in the translation uh, you know it doesn't show, show anything about that okay why why, why the Muslim to take it off you know yeah, yeah look, well here we go yeah, here we go you see this is a height in front of me in Arabic those who speak Arabic, especially Muslims, I challenge you to say that it doesn't say that. Qala, okay, here we go. Uh, Muhammad, uh, uh, when he, he spoke to her, he said to her, Ma hadha ya Aishatu? Qalat, banati. He said to her, what is this Aisha? She said, my daughters. If we go here in the English, it doesn't say that. Why? Because it's very embarrassing. She is a wife of a prophet, but yet she is calling her dolls her daughters. Yeah. You know, she say he said yeah. to her, he said to her, What is this, Aisha? She replied, My dolls. She did not say that. In Arabic, she said, My daughters. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And and, you see? and it also makes it clear that this did well that she's that, a child. That's mean she's yeah, a child. Fake. Yeah, because they always say, Well, back then she was mature and all that. You know, it, it takes that away. The notion that she was you know unusually mature for her age um, not that it's possible for a nine-year-old anyway but they always say that but, well obviously yeah you see they uh, the they they uh, they always they play the game in purpose to protect Islam translation is not meant to translate interpretation is not meant to inter give interpretation it's meant to defend you see yeah it's, it is yeah. always to defend. This is not a translation. If they are honest, honest in their translation, they should say, she said, my daughters. There's a huge difference between saying, my daughters and my doors. She did not say my yes. doors. The word doors <laughs> is not exist. And I challenge any Muslim right now who speak Arabic to call me right now and say, oh, Christian Prince, you are lying. It says yeah. in Arabic clearly, and you can go right now, any one of you can go and, and, and go to, to Google and copy what Aisha she said. And translate, you know. Mahada yes. Aisha. Remember it. Here we go. You can go from here. Mahada from this line. All right. Until this here, that there's a quotation. Copy from here and here. You can copy all the way if you want. But you will see it says, "My daughters." So why it doesn't appear? Very simple, because it's very embarrassing. She is a wife of a prophet, but yet she is a baby child. Yeah. Well, what is that book in the deep uh, number? Uh, this is uh, Sahih uh, uh, Ibn Dawood. This is Ibn Dawood. Sunan Ibn Dawood. Yeah. You, you know ha hadith, number, hadith number 4932. 4932. 4932. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. And it's Sahih. <laughs> well. It is Sahih too. But Sahih in the in the Arabic, not the English. <laughs> yeah, this is how it is. What you can say, funny religion. Anyway, uh, actually, CP, that, that's all I had. Um, I wanted to question because there were two or three of them that I come across. There were, you know, they either had a lot of Arabic and a little English, or like that one was just blank. Now, let me ask this before I go. All of these hadiths, the Arabic writing. Is the is not chain written at the beginning of them? Is, is that what that is? No, no, actually, here in the website, they are not exactly the way they are in the books. In the books, it have it's it's longer, you know. Here they are just giving you, let's say, uh, even in the translation is not even the same. Uh, like here it says, Haddathana Muhammad ibn Awf, Haddathana, etc. It's been reported by, 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 by. All of this is gone. And here they start from here. In the translation, they start from here. From Aisha, so all the first three lines in the hadith is gone. You know what I mean? Well, they did not translate everything. All this I'm highlighting now is not translated. However, that will not really affect much because it's just who said who said from 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 Aisha. 
I can let it go, no problem. But then in, inside the hadith, there's things which are serious and important. They take them off, you know, and okay. they do it in purpose. Okay. Yeah. So the is not chain is there in the Arabic on the website, but even even with that, there's still some more left off. There's <laughs> parts of the story left off in different places. Yeah, uh, left uh, in the and and the, and the story is not complete, and the translation not complete. It's not uh, it's not good translation. Uh, uh, Sometimes maybe it's a mistake, or you know, people they have different ability of translation. But most of the time, I, as I see it. It was done in purpose of deception to protect Islam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Somebody's asking me what is the real reason for Muhammad to marry Aisha? I mean, what is the real reason for anyone to marry anyone? Yeah. You know, uh, you know number one, she is a female. <laughs> number two, she is not a woman. Obviously, he likes children. You know? Yeah. Yeah, she was six when when he married her, and nine when he consummated. Well, you know, this is what the Muslim so says. This what, what the, remember, remember this is what the Muslim says. But still, I don't trust this. Maybe he married her when she was one one day old. I don't know. The Muslim they claim that Aisha she was engaged before Muhammad at the age of four. This is what they say. <laughs> so Aisha she was she was expert in dating at the age of four. She, she was going around with men at the at the age of four. The first kiss she was maybe one one day old. Yeah, but the the doctrine of embarrassment, you know, why would they make it up? You know, no, no I'm why saying they, they might even change the number to cover. You never know, as we said, because now you see this is, as I said, everything. If you go and read the book of Ibn Ishaq, you know, or Ibn Hisham, you will see that all those the books of biography of Muhammad, it says from the beginning that we filtered a lot. What? How they filter? What do you mean we filter? Anything yeah. look not suitable will insult, etc. Uh, uh, the guy he decide to either take it away or change it. So what is the honesty of the story? There's no honesty. Yeah, yeah but it, even the shock that he filtered some stuff. Yeah, it's filtered. Because yes, yes. You know, anything yeah, is not a suitable. Was... Anything is not a suitable is is filtered. It is so. There's tons of stories are deleted, talk, totally taken off, and there's tons of stories are changed to make it suitable. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because now Ibn Shaq, he was writing a hundred years after the fact. Yeah, but he's still he was he's filtering, you know. He still filtered too. So. Yeah, he is filtering, and now then the one who came after him, he, they filter more, and yeah, then they will come yeah. after after they filter for um, so filtering after filtering. Uh, this is why uh, Erdogan, the president of Turkey, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago he invited uh, scholars from around the world to Turkey to filter the hadith. Because there's many hadith they don't <laughs> present Islam, so he, he want to take off all the hadith which make Muhammad look an idiot. Yeah, they you know? embarrass him. Yeah, so it's embarrassing now. Now people are getting smarter, etc. Well, how we can explain to them that Muhammad is a prophet, and yet he said the sun set in the murky water. You know, so those things have to go. You know, so the, what what is left today is what Muslims thought it is good, but now what is good became shameful again because people they became more educated they are not naive no more and things have changed so now we need to do more filtering but it's too late because now we are in the age of the internet if they delete it from a book you know no we way. have it all over yeah. you cannot stop anything now it's it's out of control right it's, it's right it's not it's not a controlled transmission <laughs> anymore like the hand um because there were a couple of different points in Islamic history where, well, personally, I believe that they actually changed the Quran, but, you know, I have no way of proving it. And I guess they don't either. There's, there's no manuscripts or what have you. So what can you say? What can you say? Yeah, uh, you know. But I do agree with, with what you say, though. Um, it's like, why bother to do textual, you know, but to make a textual argument against it, you just look at what it says. I mean, it's <laughs> you know, it's so ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's so ridiculous. You know, what what if you had a videotape of him writing it out with his own hand? That that would actually be better. I mean, the stuff that is written there, you know, and they've been trying to fix it. The problem is today they have that those things are written by their hands. 
This is not books written by Christians about the history of Muhammad. That is the that is the 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 reason of the trouble they are facing, because if this is written by a Christian historian, they can deny it all. They can say, "Well, he's a Christian; he's lying." You know, but all of this is written by them, documented and approved, and even called Sahih. So for for them today to escape it is more difficult from escaping things in the time of Ibn Ishaq or Ibn Hisham <coughs> because at that time nobody really uh, you know there's no books anyway you know? right yeah, so uh, they can they can add they can take they can put they are the first to start writing about Muhammad but now it's a lot more difficult well I think it's impossible. <coughs> Yeah, it's impossible, but you know what what's happening now There's a new let us say a sect coming out of Islam who reject the hadith as a solution Because now they cannot change it. So now the only solution is to say well hadith is false So totally now the hadith is dumped and we say we are Quran only Then after they said we are Quran only and people they start showing them how stupid the Quran They say oh we, now we it's time to dump the uh, interpretation interpretation is wrong okay then the, you, you'd read the interpretation you ask them to give us a new interpretation but yet the new interpretation will not work so then what they will soon some of them they will say oh some verses of the Quran are corrupt so slowly slowly we will find that even the Quran is gone and they don't want yeah. it <clears throat> right that's the only thing that's possible you know and again since you have it all over the place Everybody has copies of it, Muslims and non-Muslims. I, I actually think the non-Muslims have more copies of it than the Muslims do. Yeah. If one guy changes it, it, you know, if you change it in one place, you know, say that, like you said, the Turkish president wants to get the scholars in, he wants to refine the Hadith. So let's say they do that. Well, we have the copies of the Hadith here. And, you know, they have them in Saudi Arabia. They have them in Europe. They have them all over the place. So... Someone else is going to come along and say, "That's not what it says. It's been changed, you know." <laughs> and here's the evidence we can prove it. You know, it's 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 toast. You know, it, it, it's just a matter of time, really. And um, most of Islam, it seems to me, anyway, is well. I look at it and I, and I think about it. It's coming more from the Hadith, anyway. You know, basically, it, it, Imam Bukhari, if he existed. Created, he basically created the religion anyway. I don't mean to say create; that's not the right word. Um, but you know, it's so much; it's so dependent on the hadith. You know that I have a hard time trying to visualize what it was like before Bukhari was written. You know, if you understand what I'm trying to say, I, I, I visualize a place where everybody is doing everything and calling it Islam, and somebody in charge said, "Look, you know." We need to bring some order to this. We need to bring some order to this. Go out there and, you know, give us something that the people can believe in. And that's how you come up with a deep tradition anyway. At least that's what it seems like to me. Yeah, well, we are here to expose all those stupid things. And it doesn't matter what they try to do. It's too late. And thanks to the Internet, this is a new revolution. Made things happen. If not the internet today, I will not be able to talk to any of you and I will not be able to share my knowledge with any and many things will be still uh, hiding. So internet made a big difference and uh, uh, you know, in, before in order to, to speak to others, you have to have like, let's say, just 20 years ago, the only way is TV, right? So you have to be rich to be able to be in TV. You have to have yes. a, a lot of money. Uh, but now here we go. You know, I mean, it it cost us a computer, an internet, a microphone, etc. So it's more a lot more simple. And then people they copy and right. they make videos and they copy your talk and they post around. So it is a revolution which Islam is not ready for it. But what the Muslims try to do after that, when this revolution start, try to start creating new waves of lies, which is the Quran and science, to try to make you go blind. You will not see how stupid it is. By fabricating lies that Quran and Islam speak of science because they notice that this is a generation of, of, of science where new generation new people they are more focusing in scientific proofs 
of what is happening not speeches so they try to adopt the new waves of uh, uh, mindset of a human being where science is the major uh, uh, like uh, uh, convincing uh, tool so they try to hijack the science and make Islam fit with the science but it was a joke again which is make Muslims look more bad especially after we expose them yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody in the in the chat is saying that Pakistan banned YouTube. Had you heard anything like that? Somewhat what? Someone in the chat is saying that Pakistan has banned YouTube. I don't know if this is true. <laughs> okay, but in any event, CP, that, that's actually all I had. Um, in, in the future, if you could try to give me the when you post a deep, you know, I do try to take notes of them. I like. I make a note of the topic that we're speaking of, and then I make a little table, and I put the reference there for the Hadith numbers. You, you give a lot of stuff, but I try to keep up with it. Yeah, all right. So, no problem, my friend. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. You have a good one. Uh, are we up tomorrow? Or you? Yes, tomorrow we will be up, and uh, you know, bring your uh, dish of wisdom with you in case you need some help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Take care, have my friend. Have a, have a blessed day. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. All right. <clears throat> well, our friend uh, Darius, he is the one always, he, maybe he is the last one always he called. And uh, uh, this gentleman, really, I like talking to him. He is uh, uh, very decent and he is smart too. And he is really doing a deep search. And I like, I like this kind of people who they are used to be knowing nothing. And now they knew really a lot because he, as you heard him saying, he take notes, he write things down, he, you know, this is the kind of a person in 10 years from now I will see in him that he will know a lot not just a person who knows this is how knowledge increase you know it's not just uh, listening to me or you know and this is what me myself I did you know if I just listen and I don't learn you know there's a huge difference between listening and learning you need to educate yourself knowledge is power knowledge is power absolutely you see right now we have nations who they are powerful nations do you know why because they have knowledge not because they have a huge population you know what i mean as an example israel small tiny nation very small but this country is selling a weapon to china to usa knowledge my friend Knowledge is what does count. Ignorance means you are not exist. So reserve your place in the society, in the community, and the most important, in the front of God. Earn knowledge. Knowledge where you can defend the truth and the faith and bring more people to know about the truth. More people who will recognize who is the Messiah and what he did for us. Knowledge about why we are following the Messiah and why we reject someone who is bragging about how powerful his penis is. That is not the best example for someone to be followed. A person who says that, my God, he gave me the power of 40 men. That is not the person you want to listen to. Imagine me. I'm just a human being like anyone. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a priest. I'm not a bishop. I'm a sinner. Imagine I now I say to you, oh, I have the power of 40 men. Are you going to really listen to me after that? Do you think it's worth it to listen to someone even let's say let's say for the sake of argument Muhammad he have the power of 60 donkeys what that have to do with him being a prophet what the sexual power have to do with him being a prophet or not if a prophet is count about how many time he can have sex then we can make any rabbit our prophet Why you Muslims you follow Muhammad go and just follow a, pro a rabbit He do it every five minutes The logic of Islam is a stupid satanic demonic evil and It is not the best example for us to be following someone like Muhammad
so I want to say thank you guys for being here may the Lord bless you all and tomorrow we will be in the same time between 4 and 4 30 we will start so be with us invite your friends and subscribe and tell everybody about what we do this is a Christian Prince was with you for today may the Lord bless you and have a blessed weekend and blessed Sunday and don't forget to pray for those who do the good work I'm not going to say pray for me it's up to you pray for whoever you think it's worth it to pray for pray for those who deserve your prayer and may the Lord bless you and give you guidance and see you very soon again tomorrow God is willing Christ is Lord Islam is false and we see you soon again bye-bye